Hi everyone, it's Mickey from Lair Academy, and in this lesson, we're going to be talking about environment files within Laravel. If we switch over to a default project, you can see right off the bat, I have two ENV files. I have my .env and then a .env example. Laravel ships with this .env example, and if we open it up, you can see it has a whole bunch of variables, and this is what we would use to get Laravel off the ground and running. Composer will install Laravel by downloading all the vendor files, and then it will take a copy of this and name it to .env. If we open it up, you can see we have things like the key already filled in. If we had a username and password for a database, it would be filled in here as well. I highly recommend that you do not check this file into any repository such as GitHub or Bitbucket because we're dealing with sensitive information. What you'll want to do is have your .env example and keep it up to date, meaning any new variables that you have in your application, such as Google Analytics sorry, or Stripe or PayPal, you'll put in here and leave blank. Composer will then add them back into your production file, and then it will be up to you once you install that application to put the actual username and passwords. Now, you may be asking, well, what else can we use our env file for instead of username and passwords? Well, what we can do, and we'll just close my example, is in here we could actually use it to turn on and off things. For example, let's say we're dealing with Google, and we'll set that to false. Now, right now, this is Google Analytics, and it's set to false, and we need to tell our application that we're going to be using Google Analytics. So in resources and then views and the welcome file will go all the way down to the bottom and right here before the body tag, let's add a script tag and we can say if env and then the variable name, which we named in here, just Google, if this is going to be equal to true and if let's run an alert and we'll just say Google include it. Now, if I come back to my ENV and I change this to true, and I switch here and I refresh, you can see that Google's included. Now, if we say OK and we come back to Sublime and we change it back to false, when we run this page again, we don't get any pop-up. So an example of this would be if we're installing, installing this project onto a production server, we may already have the Google tracking analytics in our ENV file and we just need to turn it on on production only. So we would just set that flag to true. Some of the other things you could do here at the top is we could easily check for debug, whether it's true or false, or we could actually set the e, the environment itself. Instead of local, we have something like production. Now you can see the env file is not only for Booleans. We have some strings in there. We have IP addresses and ports. Now let's pick on the app name itself here. If we come back to our welcome right here, let's include the app name by doing env app name, make sure that ends off properly, and we'll take our application name out of there. Now, if we come back to our page and we refresh, you can see that we have Lair Academy, but that's not really what I want. I want that full name that I had in there. Now, this is going to cause an issue, and in the later versions, we didn't have this, or sorry, the earlier versions, we didn't have this nice error message. But right now, it's basically telling us that the value contains spaces, so it needs to be surrounded by quotes. So we can easily fix this by just adding double quotes. We come back to our page and refresh, and that has been fixed. The other thing that I find happens quite often is a lot of people will put their applications up into production and then they leave debug on true. Now let's say we cause an error and right here we'll just write some code. We'll say app user first. Even though that's not doing anything, if I hit refresh, we'll get this whoops. And right here is a whole bunch of information that anyone can actually read and see. Um, they can kind of see their sessions, what's installed, what's running and everything. And what we want to do or make sure is that our env file that we put in production, the debug is actually set to false. Once we do that, we'll get this whoops message and we're not, we're not exposing any sensitive information. That's just one thing to look out for when we're dealing with env files. Now, the other thing that we might want to do is we might want to cache our env files. The reason why we're doing this is basically for speed. 
Right now, when we call this function here, Laravel is going to load up this env file. It's going to parse the file for whatever variable we're asking for, and then it's going to obviously come back. And what we can do is we can cache this so that all of these files are within an array. And in order to do this, we have to load up our configuration. If you look at our env file, you can see we have our app, we have db, we have redis, mail, pusher. If we look on the left here underneath config, you can see that we kind of have the same categories. If we look at the database file, you can see it's actually going to the env file itself. It's using env variable and then a default value if it can't find. If we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see the exact same thing for the username password. And let's pick on app as well. We have an app name here and the list just goes on and on. So if we wanted to make a new configuration for Google, well, we could easily just right click on config and say new file. And let's just call this tracking.php because this will be used for our tracking software. And we're just going to return an array. An array will have Google. And then inside that array, we'll just have enabled. And here is where we'll use our env variable. So env will be Google. And by default, it will be false. Okay, so let's actually set this to true just to make sure that everything's still working. If we hit refresh, you can see that Google's included. Now what we want to do is we want to call this config file instead of our env file. So in our welcome.blade.php, right here, instead of saying env Google, we'll say config. And well, now we all now all we have to do is go through the folder. So we want config tracking dot. If we look at our tracking.php, so we'll have tracking.google.enabled. Google dot enabled. Oops, enabled. So if the config file tracking Google enable is set to true, then we're gonna get this alert here. Now what we can do is we could run php arson config cache. And that's going to clear any config that we have already cached and then cached it again. So if I refresh, everything's working just as normal. However, if I come back here and I'm just like, hmm, I really want to disable Google tracking on production, well, I can come here and I say false. But if I come back to my page and I hit refresh, I still get this message here. The reason I get this message is because, well, everything's cached. If you take a look at Bootstrap, cache and then config here you can see it's a php array that contains all of our environment files right here we have the app if we scroll down we'll have the database auth broadcasting cache where's database database is right here so basically what we want to look for is tracking so right here we have tracking we have google and then enabled true or false so if we wanted to actually make this false in our environment file, well, we'll have to run another command called php arson config cache. And again, that will clear it and then cache it. So we can come back and we hit refresh and we don't get that message. Now you can see that with our files being cached, we're missing this information here. Now, if we switch back to our application and we go to the welcome page, if we scroll up to where we have the title, we're using env. However, Laravel knows that it expects a cached version of the file, so env is actually going to return blank for everything. For example, if we try to env, let's see here, let's env our database connection here. We'll say env database connection. Make sure we wrap that in curly braces. If we come back and we refresh, again, completely blank. It's all because Laravel expects the cached file instead of the env variable. So to fix these things, well, all we have to do is say config, then we need to track this down. An app, well, that gives us a pretty good information. We'll say app, and then right here at the top, you can see that we have name. It obviously refers to the app name, so that's exactly what we want. So we'll say app.name, and let's get rid of the database connection. And if we come back and we hit refresh, you can see that everything is loaded in just fine now. And I think I'm going to leave you with that as it's a very good understanding of environment files in Laravel. Hopefully you can see the power of them and how to cache them and debug them if we run into issues. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Or you can even support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.